Well, hello, welcome back to Piddle in the Marsh. As you can see, we've got a couple of trains running, well, three to be precise. It's a steam engine, a Midland uh, 4F at the back, coming round with a 31 and a 37. Now, I'm not here to show you running trains. We have something a little different for Piddle in the Marsh because I don't normally show how this is done but I've been mithered to do it so I'm going to. I uh, purchased an HST which came up on eBay. Yes, that horrible swear word. Last weekend and it arrived on Saturday. And this is it. A uh, Barbie one, if I can get it in focus, there we go. Which is in absolutely pristine condition and came in the box you can see it in. And it's hardly been used, in fact it's practically new. The only problem is, it's DC only. Now as you can see, the power car is missing from one lot. There's only one. Which can only mean one thing. Yep, I've started the conversion to DCC. So, I'll take you into uh, my little workshop area, which is also known as the dining room table, and uh, I'll show you what we've been up to. So, welcome to my workshop, aka the dining room table. And as you can see, there's a power car for an HST. And it is, as it was advertised, uh, it's practically mint. Doesn't look as though it's done anything. The only reason you can tell little bits happened to it is there's a little bit of carbon from the motor inside. Now, it's going to be difficult for me to show you all of this, but I will try. And I will admit that I've already had this in bits and done a little bit of work on it. Because I needed to know how to do it, so um, I've had to do a lot of um, looking into it. And I am going to convert it using a tram fabric motor and nearly his instructions, I think. So uh, we'll show you what's inside. Now, I am going to have to keep turning off because I've only got two hands. I can't hold the camera and stick it where you need to see. If it's mild, if I've got the camera on the stand, my arm's in the way and my hands are in the way. So I'll have to show you it in stages. So one body has been taken off and there we have a new power car. Uh, with the motor in the middle behind the two black bits. Now, much to my surprise, there's an actual magnet sat in the top of these things, and uh, that seems to hold the two clips that are there actually together, and the motor's underneath it just sat open, no casing or anything on it, um, in the middle of the frame. There used to be... Uh, more the screws, there used to be four screws holding the bottom on, as you can see there's uh, one missing from there and there's another one just hiding behind the bogies. So to do anything to one of these things, you have to take the screw out of the end to release the bogies, because they are held in by the aluminium thing there, which just slides off, and the piece of black plastic holds either side. So I'll pull one out and show you what I mean. So there we have a bogey, the one with the coupling end on and the piece that holds it in. And as you can see, the worm drives up underneath and there's a half circle. And when the two bits go together, that holds the bogey in by its uh, two wings at the top, as you can see. Now I've never seen bogies with the should we say double connections on because there's like the two bits with the hoops on as you can see which look as though they're for wires but they're not and then you've got the other two pieces which um, one slides on the actual metal frame of the body which in this case is um, there as you can see where it runs and the other one slides on the uh, brass strip at the bottom the other one's held on exactly the same way so it's uh, screw at that end. So we'll just take it in bits and uh, show you what's behind the rest of it. Sorry about the shaking about, but um, I'm still drugged up with this horrible chemotherapy and I'm not as uh, 
as steady as I could be. So there we have it, uh, minus bogies. Now, if you can just see where my finger is, there is actual nut, which is um, in the little bit that's held. So it's held captive in a cutout. And the screw for it is there. Now, as you can see, two are missing because uh, I didn't want to put them all back uh, to do it because they didn't really want to come out. So you have to take those screws and nuts out to get to the motor. Okay, I'll, which I'll do now. So there's the body and there's the underneath side. Now, the uh, bit that's stuck up there in the middle, I can get my fingers to work here, the silver bit, actually held in a spring and it was the contact through you know, the brushes for the motor. Now the other one, I'll turn it the right way so you can get it to the other side, was underneath that flap there and just literally pushed in. All you had to do was just move the thing to the side and you know that little contact to the side and um, it came away. Now I'm going to use that contact to uh, attach a decoder to, you know, to of pick up for the body. And I shall also use the other one down on this for the other side. So that's positive and negative. I've just got to uh, get a wire up to the top and then we'll take it from there. So there is the motor underneath and the drive. Now none of that in the middle there is needed anymore because that's a DC motor supposedly not compatible with DCC. Um, so we shall stick a proper digital motor in it from some fabric. Now to get at it properly you have to flick these bits of metal off the side and then the motor just uh, comes out. And which I'll do now. So there's the bits off the side of the motor and the magnet and I've just flicked the motor up enough so that it will come out and as you can see each end of the motor is driven with two plastic couplings. Now a tram fabric one conversion shows you doing it with a piece of uh, plastic tube which I have done on a high mech but I've also done it by on a high mech as well by keeping the two plastic pieces. Now I'm going to try and keep the two plastic pieces here because as it just comes out I think they're a better way and if the they'll keep in order a lot better than a plastic tube so um, those motors or the motor bits there are now scrap now I'm not the best at doing this because I, I needed a small vice and uh, I haven't got it but as you can see I have taken a bit of the metal out down here to give a bit more room for the motor and I've also had to do the corresponding thing let's see if I can get it where my fingers are there to allow the motor to go in now, I've taken a bit more out than I actually needed to but I did it on purpose because I can always um, put a bit of black tack in just to hold the motor and make sure it stays there because oh, we don't need the holes in the bottom anymore so it doesn't matter and that is about as far as I've got until uh, Royal Mail come up with the post with a new motor and then I'll take you the rest of the way and when uh, UG send me the decoder which is supposed to be in the post um, we'll take it from there but you can see how small the uh, screws and the nuts are this is a, a very small screwdriver and um, everything is exceedingly small so when we get the other bits we'll carry on so welcome back 24 hours later to my uh, workbench e.g. the dining room table and um, a parcel from Tram Fabric has arrived, as you can see, with a uh, Graham Farish pool update pack. And the motor has arrived, which is just rolled in behind there, which, as you can see, is a lot smaller than the uh, oh, there, that's bare. It's a lot smaller than the other ones. Oh, come on. 
get off. Now, as you can see in the pack, there is a plastic tube, which Tram Fabric um, uses to go from the two white pieces, which are in there, you have to take those off and then slide it over that and over the motor, which I've chosen not to do because I've done conversions on other things. And as you can see, there are some little brass pieces on the end of the motor to make it so that it's the same uh, diameter as the actual drive shaft in there. Um, use these a lot on doing the dapple ones to so everything fits. So the two spindles have now got the blast brass pieces on. I have, uh, oh, let's see if we can do it. I have taken the um, bits of white off, which are these two bits, which go on the end of the motor. Oh God, I can't do this when I'm not looking what I'm doing. I'm watching the phone to make sure it's in focus. So they will sit into there and then the motor will get stuck in. Now I'm obviously not doing this at the minute because I'm waiting for the decoder to come which needs the wires from the decoder put into the motor. And now because I am expecting to sit the decoder in the gap there, I'm not going to be using extra wires. So I want to make sure I can do it all in one go. So I can cut the wires from the decoder down to the motor to the right length and then fasten them all in at one hit, one hit. So it should all have very few wires and it should all work perfectly well. But we shall see. So until the decoder comes, I can really do no more. So hopefully we'll see you in 24 hours. So welcome back. Turned out to be 48 hours because unfortunately um, snail mail didn't turn up with the decoder which as you can see is now there. I have also, uh, while I was off camera, I've added the uh, the white bits which are part of the drive system to the motor on each end. Which I'll show you how it sits together in a second so just give us a minute while I uh, slot it in because I can't do, I haven't got three hands. So, as you can see now, the motor is sat in where it should go. It's not in quite the right place. It needs a bit of uh, black tack, which is currently under my left hand, which is holding the body, uh, just to stick it into the right place and hold it. And will have another bit on this side as well when I push the base on to do it. As you can now see, the white bits off the motor end are connected into the two on the drive shaft. So... Uh, it should work. All I've got to do now is fit a decoder and uh, wire it up and then hopefully we should have some moving things. Now the decoder is a um, direct from YouTube, if I can just get it in focus. It is a uh, an MX167F I've chosen to use because uh, I've got a fair amount of space in here to play with so and as you can see I've uh, I've removed two wires which are completely uh, useless to me because the uh, Graham Farish power car doesn't have any lights in it so there's just no point so I've got two wires for rail and two wires for the motor so we'll uh, just sort these out and then we'll see how we go So, after a rather bit of a struggle with it, I have actually managed now to get the motor in with the two wires attached for the decoder, which was not easy, I promise you. Two wires sat there, obviously, for the uh, track. So, um, one of those is going to get attached onto the um, piece there that the wires keep trying to hide, which I can't move because I can't see what I'm doing. Let's try that. That bit there on the top, ready made attachment. And if I can find it on the uh, 
underside of the thing there's another piece there right by my thumb which is ready soldered which will take the other one so I'm now just going to work out the best way to take it down and I think it's going to involve putting a little hole in the plastic there just next to the uh, grooves where the body goes but we'll uh, see how we go anyway that's the motor in complete with the original plastic bits I've not used the rubber tube as I said might have been easier to do it that way I don't know but um, it's in it's flat it's stuck in with black tack and we'll see how we go so there we have the installation with my trusty screwdriver I'll try and do it onto uh, bit there is the uh, one side for the uh, pickup from the rails and then on the other side is the other pickup from the rails and I put a hole through the black plastic there which is next to their pickup for that and the red wire comes up there to, to the decoder so hopefully that should work so all I've got to do now is test it but before I do that I'll put all four screws back in and put the ends on for the bogies and then we'll see what happens so there we have it with its decoder sat up in the air which I'm going to just stick on the top um, with a bit of black tack at the minute uh, before I encase it totally in a bit of shrink wrap uh, I'm just going to go and test it and make sure everything's okay and then we'll see what happens so it's on the track and as you can see it is working I'll be honest it's a fraction noisy at the moment but uh, having had a look at all the uh, cogs on it and the axles and so I'm not at all surprised they've all got edges on them so um, just show you how new this model was when I got it So it is uh, doing some circuits. And hopefully, after it's had an hour or two of this, it'll have sorted itself out. Like everything though, it takes time. So there you go, conversion of a uh, Farage HST a DCC from a DC only model when it appears again out to the other side hope this video has been alright for you it has been a bit jerky trying to do it all with uh, two hands when you need three or four. It does look wrong having an uh, HST coming alongside the manor and a castle. As it disappears off into the tunnel, I'll leave you with it. Thanks for watching.